Hi everyone, this is the first video in a series of videos for the BCS Business Technology class. Uh, my name is Brennan Neely. I am one of the creators of this course along with Richard Haskell. Um, I'm going to be presenting all of the online content, so any of the videos you watch going forward, I will be the person talking, though I might not be the person teaching in person. Um, so this course is designed to cover some of the technology that is necessary in business, spreadsheets and using financial calculators, and we're gonna get into that a little bit today. This week's content is kind of just setting up the basics. We're gonna talk about the anatomy of a spreadsheet and navigating around a spreadsheet, kind of the basics of that. We're gonna focus on using Excel and Google Sheets. Um, though there are other products, these two are the most widely used, Excel being the one that is the industry standard for, for spreadsheets. Later on in the course, we'll also use the HP 10 B2 calculator as our financial calculator. Um, most of the commands and functions of these two pieces are similar and we're actually gonna learn how to use them um, together so that we are understanding what's going on within spreadsheets and how to make use of a calculator when we need it and how to just use spreadsheets to make our lives a little bit easier when we don't need the calculator at our side. So today, just a quick overview of what we're gonna be talking about. First, we're gonna go, go over the anatomy of a spreadsheet, then saving your work, um, and then how to navigate around a spreadsheet and the basics of entering some data into a spreadsheet. So let's start off with anatomy of a spreadsheet. So what I mean when I say anatomy of a spreadsheet is what are the different parts within a spreadsheet. I have a YouTube link here to a separate video that's going to go over a lot of the similar things that I'm going to talk about today. They might go a little bit more in depth in some parts. They might talk about a couple of different things, but in general, you're going to get the same out of these two videos. So if you'd like a secondary resource, you can go ahead and click on this link. All of these slides will be posted within Canvas so that you can review them, go back over them. They're not just used in these videos, but you will have access to them, so this link will be there. So let's talk about spreadsheet vocabulary, vocabulary a little bit. We have kind of all these different names that are specific to spreadsheets, how they're used. Um, and I just wanna make sure we're all kind of on the same page about what different parts of a spreadsheet are called and that way when we're making references to different areas within a spreadsheet, um, nobody's lost and not understanding kind of where we're headed. So to do this, I'm gonna open an Excel spreadsheet during this video. So I'm just going into Excel here. I'm gonna use Excel though, it's like I said, it's similar in most um, spreadsheet softwares that anyone will have, but we're gonna use Excel. So I'm gonna open a blank workbook. Now doing this might look a little bit different um, but you're just going to want to go, go ahead and open a blank workbook. I would suggest that as I go through these things, um, you try and kind of follow along on your own. Get on your computer, open a workbook, get Excel up and running so that you can maybe click around as I go through the video to help make a little bit more sense. It's one thing to watch someone else do it, but to figure it out on your own is, is helpful. So I just opened this new workbook and we're gonna kind of start going through this vocabulary here. So first, I've said it three or four times already, but a workbook is a set of worksheets. So what does that mean? Down here at the bottom, I have, I can add multiple different spreadsheets. So let's say I have spreadsheet one, and I have a set of data in spreadsheet one, and then on spreadsheet two, I have another set of data and then spreadsheet three, I'm just gonna leave blank for now. The collection of these three spreadsheets or worksheets is a workbook. So all three of these worksheets together make up the collective workbook. Um, a spreadsheet is what you're seeing here. We can go ahead and click on different um, areas of the spreadsheet, of the worksheet. Um, those words kind of are interchangeable with each other. So we've covered those two columns. So Spreadsheets are organized by rows and columns. The columns are up here at the top. They're denoted by the alphabet. Um, you actually have a 
almost endless list of columns as you can see here. So this is A, B, C, and then rows are denoted by numbers here down the side. So we have row one, two, three, four, and on and on and on. Basically an endless combination here. Next is cells. Cells are each of these um, places where a row and a column intersect each other. So for example, this cell right here is A1. So this is how kind of cells are denoted. They're denoted first by their column, so A, and then by their row one. So this cell here is G10. So if you're on a spreadsheet, you can go ahead and click around just to kind of get a feel for how things move. Next, we want to talk about a range. A range is simply a group of cells. So if I had kind of another set of data here, and I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of these, this is what's known as a range, this group of cells here. So we can have that range. We can have a separate range here, a separate range here. A range is simply a group of cells. They're often denoted, um, you'll see this a little bit later, but this range here, they're denoted first by the upper left cell, so F6, and then a colon, and then the lower right cell, so H11. So if we wanted to refer to this range right here, it would be denoted as F6, colon, and then like I said, it was down to H11, so it would be H11. Just for future reference, this will come up a little bit later. Also so that you're aware, whatever cell that you're in that's highlighted is shown up here in the top left corner. So if you don't want to try and go ahead and line that up and then line this up, you can just look up and say, okay, this is cell I4 and know where you're at. Next we have the ribbon. So the ribbon is this area that you see right here. It has a bunch of different functions on it. Just above the ribbon are tabs. So depending on what, which tab you click on, the ribbon will change. So if I'm on the Home tab, as you'll see, this might look similar to like a Word uh, document. It has ways to edit text, ways to change the fill color, has a couple different other functions having to do with numbers, and we'll get into some of that later. Um, if I go ahead and click on a different tab, so let's click on the Data tab, the ribbon updates and changes. So depending on what you're using Excel for, you have all these different tabs which change the ribbon to aid you in what you're trying to do at that exact moment. Next we have the formula bar, which is right here. Usually when you're, this is an easy way to enter text into a cell. So if I go ahead and click on cell E5 here and go up to the formula bar, I can start typing it up here and it will show up in the cell. You can also just start typing in the cell. So if I want to type here, I can just start typing within the cell. Um, but it's a good practice to get into to just start using the formula bar right off. Lastly, we have the undo button. This will be your best friend. It is still mine after years of using spreadsheets. Um, it's up here. This is the undo button. So let's say I have all this data. Pretend this is some important data that I have and I accidentally highlight it and delete it. And I need to get it back. All you do is go up here to the top, click back, it replaces it, and you can continue to go back and back and back um, to whatever state uh, in the past that you want your spreadsheet to be in. You can also jump forward. Just a little quick side note, if you have everything to where it is, there's a little shortcut, which is on Mac, you use Command-Z, so Command-Z works as sort of your... Uh, your undo button, it's the shortcut for it. And if you are on Windows or PC, it is Control Z. I think I'm getting that right, it's Control Z. So Command Z on Mac, Control Z on PC or Windows. Let's see what we have next here. So next we're gonna talk about saving. Saving is extremely important. Um, nowadays, you have the option to set up auto save functions within Excel. And if you're using Google Spreadsheets or Google Sheets, um, it kind of happens automatically as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection. So 
on this current spreadsheet that I'm in, my autosave is turned off. It's important to go ahead and turn it on. Um, I'm, I'll talk about this in just a moment. You want to make sure, I would just always go and turn that on basically as soon as you open a new spreadsheet. What it's going to ask you to do the first time you try and save anything, another way to, to save also is to click File, is to go ahead and click Save As. So if it's my first time auto saving, it brings us up because it wants me to save as. So I'm going to show you really quick how to save as. We have some steps right here. Um, if you just want to, if even if you have auto save on or not, and you just want to be sure that you're saving, you can go up to the top, click file, click save. Now, if it's your first time saving, let's just look at this. If it's your first time saving, you're going to have to click save as. Many of you will already know this from other types of documents, but you have to save the document, you have to save as for the first time you're saving a document. So you go up here, click save as, and then it's going to want you to to name um, where you're saving it, or, or give the give the document a name, excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and call this just um, practice spreadsheet one. And normally I would just go and click save. Now I'm going to give you a little a little tip here. You want to name the document, but you want to place it somewhere where you're going to be able to find it. You want to make file folders, and you want to make the names of each different document specific so that you can find them again. I know you think that you're going to remember it, but once you have 15, 20, 30, 100 spreadsheets, you need to have specific names and specific places where those spreadsheets go so that you can come back and find them for later. So, for example, um, in my computer, I have, let's go ahead and just do Westminster Work. I have it here. I can save this practice spreadsheet there. It's going into this file folder. That way I can click save. Now, if you're on Mac, it will look like this. You go into Finder. I just saved it in Downloads and then West Mini Work. And then uh, here's the practice spreadsheet right there. It was easy for me to find. I can find it quickly. I gave it a specific name. Um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you make specific um, folders like this for your work and your personal life. You do not want to combine those. Everything just starts to get um, a little bit hard to use and hard to find if they are combined. Once you've saved for the first time, you've saved as for the first time, every time after that you can just come up here and click save or you can turn your auto save on. I'm not going to upload this, but most of you won't even have that come up. You can just turn your autosave on. Next, let's talk a little bit about navigating and entering data. So you've seen me do it a little bit already, but you have to click on the different cells when you want to start editing or start typing within a cell. So let's just show really quick what that looks like. Like I said, you've seen me do this, but let's say I want to start putting text in here. I need to click on it, and then I can go ahead and start typing right away. Um, once we're done entering, so let's say I'm going to type just something random. When I'm done and I want to enter that text and be done with the cell, I hit return on Mac or I hit enter on PC or Windows. So whatever I'm typing, I go ahead and type, 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 and then hit return or hit enter. That basically enters that information into the cell and it's, it shifts you down a cell. So I'm here, anytime I hit enter or return, it shifts me down a cell. I can actually go ahead and hit shift, hold shift down, and then hit enter or return and it will move me up. So they're kind of opposite of each other. So enter return moves me down and then shift plus enter return moves me up. Next, uh, really quickly, clicking on a cell versus clicking in a cell. So one, one click puts us on a cell. Um, for example, I can click here. I'm on this cell. I can start typing. If I go ahead and click here and automatically start typing, it's just going to start deleting what's already in that cell. So let's go back a little bit. And let's say I have this busy tech in here, and I'd like to click in the cell. Um, so that I can add to the information that's in there. So I'm going to have to click twice. So if, once again, if I click once, click once on it, start typing, it deletes what's in there. But 
if I double click on the cell, so one, two, one more time, one, two, now I'm in the cell, and I can use the arrow keys to move around, and I can go ahead and add something, so like technology. Oh, you're seeing that I am not able to spell here. <laughs> but basically, one click is on a cell, two clicks, one, two, is in a cell, and you can go ahead and edit what's in there. <clears throat> Talked a little bit about this, moving around a spreadsheet. Enter moves us down. Shift plus enter return moves us up. You have the tab button, which shifts you to the right. So clicking tab moves me to the right, and I can do the same thing as before. I hold shift and click tab. That moves me back to the left. You can also, like you've seen, just click around to move how you want to move. Apart from that, you can use the arrow keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and then I'm just using the arrow keys to navigate. Right, left, up, sorry, up, down. So just use the arrow keys. Um, copy and pasting, it's similar to other types of softwares where for Mac, it's gonna be Command C is to copy and let's say I wanna paste this over here, it's Command V. Um, on Windows and PC, it is Control C and Control V. Uh, let's see, I have that there. I talked about Command Z. Again, that is just your easy way to kind of use your undo button. So if I hold down Command and I click Z, 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 I'm still holding Command that whole time. That's just kind of your quick undo button. And that is all.